Hello everybody and welcome back to Forest River. As you can see, there are bales for miles. Been working on cranking out these corn stock bales and let me tell you, there are plenty of them. Uh, we'll get into that here in just a second, but we are out of net wrap, so we need to run this over to the baler so we can get uh, another roll thrown in there and uh, keep on bailing. right there all right let's jump in here we're gonna back up a little bit perfect and uh, we are loaded up so as you can see we have made a total of 132 bales uh, if you remember we had 53 soybean bales and so far I have already made 79 corn stock bales it's literally insane uh, how many bales that we're making off of this corn stubble um, I mean these windrows are just massive and it has been filling like none other especially on my headland passes those seem to like I couldn't get anywhere <laughs> and we would fill it's uh it's insane but it is quite nice at the same time i mean it is it really is um it is going to help us a lot uh money wise so that is a big help but it's definitely gonna be a task to uh, get that money. Um, so I have spent a little time on the phone with uh, the with uh, Rob down at the dealership and uh, he did inform me that uh, they are doing uh, lease incentives um, the way he put it is they're wanting to help out a lot of the smaller guys that are trying to work their way up around here because um, I mean the price of land is expensive. The price of equipment is expensive. Seed, fertilizer, chemical, everything is expensive. And they know that the only way that you can keep making money is to have equipment to help you do things as efficiently as possible. And, uh, so they're trying to better support the smaller guys that, you know, we can't afford to always buy new machinery or things like that from uh, the dealership. So we may not always have the highest of credit or the greatest of credit reports in purchases like that and so they are trying to implement a program to better help that and uh, so it's a lot more you know they they don't offer all of it on I mean we can't go and buy a brand new you know six seven hundred thousand dollar combine and expect you know or not buy but you know lease it with the chance of buying it 
Um, you know, when we go, if we go into the dealership right now and say, I want to lease a new combine, you know, newer combine, not necessarily brand new, but newer, um, you know, they would sit with, down with us and first look at, okay, what combine are we in the market for? And, you know, say we wanted to sell our New Holland Combine that we currently have and we wanted to upgrade to, like, I don't know, an 8820, you know, something like that, you know. Um, we have, you know, for something older like that, our option for the lease program is, okay, we just take it out on a loan, basically, strictly through the dealership. So we don't even have to mess with our bank. Or, you know, say, okay, we wanted to go with, um, say we wanted to upgrade to like a 9,000 STS series combine. Then we have the option of, okay, we can lease it for a season and we just pay over that season, you know, figure out the amount of hours that we put on it, the duration that we have it, that sort of thing, and then we pay them after it's all said and done, or we could lease to own it. So he's getting me a little more detail on it um, because I think that might be something that we look into and just look into a lot of leasing it to own it um, I mean we're not gonna jump the gun and throw ourselves in the hole and go get ourselves an X9 combine or an S series combine anything like that but just to kind of help us get up there in upgrades a little bit while also still having the money to uh, expand our operation in terms of land. So uh, I've also talked to a couple of guys today um, that are looking to rent out some of their land and actually a lot of it is close to the farm. Uh, there is some that is a little bit further away that could be considered but at the moment I'm looking more at you know these fields that are closer to home uh, and things like that so I am kind of working on it but our biggest thing is that we need to uh, get our crops sold first so that way we have extra money we can make some payment you know some extra loan payments if you know we have the extra money obviously we're still making our current loan payments and uh, if we do you know decide to get into this new leasing program that they have um, you know we'll make sure that we can still make our monthly payments there as well but um, you know just to doing it this way should potentially help us uh, kind of boost up because we're not you know okay we need a cultivator we need um, you know, a little bit bigger combine. We need a couple of smaller semis, you know, things like that to kind of increase our efficiency, um, help us get this stuff done. But we also need more land so that way we can grow more crop, we have more grain to sell, and we can make more money. Now, also in the aspect of doing that, 
our three grain bins are not gonna cut it for us. I mean, it's it's not enough. Um, now, whether we throw up some hopper bins or we build some more bins like what we have or something, um, or even if we built a small silo complex, I mean, something, we have to do something. Um, because if we do increase our land any, we're not going to be able to take that on, um, storage wise. We would have to, you know, resort to grain bags even more, which, yes, they work, but then we have the risk of what happens if that grain bag breaks? What happens then? Um, I mean, grain bags are nice, but they're not a permanent solution. So we need to figure out that permanent solution to kind of help us in the future. So I've been trying to, you know, throw all these ideas around in my head trying to make sense of something, figure out an idea, but it's hard to do that while everything is still in the bins. So that's kind of the biggest thing is just waiting on that. Um, I mean, we got to get everything out of the bins, see what the bank account looks like before we can really make any major decision on anything. So it is, you know, frustrating. We know what needs to be done, but we know that at this exact moment, we can't do it. Our hands are very tightly tied in this situation. Um, I mean, it's it's how things go. It's what we have to deal with. That I mean, that's never going to go away, no matter how big we get. Um, I mean, there's always going to be some kind of an issue that we have to figure out how to solve it. But we're held up because of what's inside of the bin. So, um, I mean, it is just the way that it goes. That's how it oftentimes ends up. And it is just what it is at that kind of point. So, but that's a wrap on our bailing so we're gonna get this guy back to the farm and we're gonna get this baler washed up and uh, we'll get the rake and the international washed up uh, when we take the international over we're gonna grab the grain bag unloader right away uh, just so that way it's at the farm uh, John told me that they didn't even use any grain bags this year so he doesn't need it this year um, and in fact he's thinking of selling it because they've built more bins so he doesn't think they'll need it um, I don't plan to buy it as I was just mentioning but uh, he said that we can come grab that whenever and we can keep it sitting at our yard as long as we need so uh, that'll be a big help this guy up right here for the moment guard light came on cool and uh, we'll get this guy washed up first just so we can pull it out of the way and uh, we'll wash the uh, baler and John Deere off once we get back because once we get this washed up we're gonna 
run the rake back right away and uh, grab that bag unloader so we can bring this back and then we'll take the baler back and on our way back we're gonna swing in and uh, grab Tom's bale wagon there so we're gonna pull this over here and swing it around This old guy up here. All right, let's run this back and go get that unloader. And then we'll, uh, I think another thing that we'll do too when we get back with the unloader is we'll uh, we'll see how much time we got, but we might. Uh, might also get some equipment thrown inside um, before the weather kind of takes a turn here so that way we can get all of our equipment inside obviously our roller is probably going to stay out um, just because that thing you can't really back up so you can just see it's it's literally a sea of bales. It's bales everywhere you can see. So we are gonna have a lot of work ahead of us to uh, get all these bales hauled in. It's gonna be insane. But hopefully the payout will be worth it. Um, let's just take a look here. Straw, it says we have 1.1 we have 1,152,500 liters, and it's saying that we should get 57,000, but I think we'll get a little more than that. Because I think we got a fair amount of money from uh, our few oats bales that we had sold at the beginning of harvest, so... I think we'll get a little more money than that out of it, but we'll see. And I mean, if a little under 60 grand is all that we get out of it, that's still 60 grand that we didn't have that would have been laying there in the field getting worked under next spring. So, I mean, it's not really a lose situation, I guess. I did really enjoy using this rake though. Um, it is a pretty nice rake, but I'm just, I'm not sure how I feel about uh, the hydraulic drive on it. I mean, growing up, all we had was just a, I mean, we did have rakes like this, but it was just the old school style delivery and I remember Grandpa did get a, I think it was like a six-wheel uh, rake, and I remember us thinking that was, you know, it was a wheel rake, so it just ran off of the ground, no hydraulics or anything like that. We thought that was the cat's meow. Might have just been us, but... I don't know, I've always kind of favored the wheel rakes a little more over this. But I would potentially look into getting one in the future, that's for sure. Right, drop that there, and then we'll grab this guy.
get this back to the farm then. I mean, I do got to give it to him though. John does have a, you know, a nicely set up yard. Um, I mean, they, this is not their main yard. I probably mentioned that before, but this is just where his place is. Uh, his son has the main yard, uh, which is uh, further to the northeast there of us yet, so. And another thing too that, I mean, with this new leasing program, uh, you know, of course, depending on how our conversation goes tomorrow with um, our potential new neighbor, uh, or well, not potential, our upcoming new neighbor, um, if Jason's not, you know, if Jason isn't planning on running things there himself, I mean, there's a chance of us running cows in the next year, which would be fantastic, but that's more equipment that we need to buy. I mean, we need something to cut hay with, rake it, ted it, bale it, haul it, feed it. Um, we'd need a stock trailer to haul our cows. We'd need cows. I mean, so to try and buy all that machinery. Granted, I mean, we would maybe need one more tractor. Um, maybe upgrade our skid steer a little you know get a loader tractor and then maybe a little beefier bobcat um, and some forks for that I mean we could make it work if we got like one more tractor or something but um, I mean it's just it's the fact of it's more equipment and that's gonna take more money, so. So I think for now what we're gonna do, actually let's back this in right there beside that building. Kinda doing a circle here, but. I was just gonna pull it up in the gravel there, but I think we can just put it back here, kinda out of the way. Till, uh, whenever we need it. Let's take a look here. How are we doing on time? 23. Okay. So, I think we're going to go ahead and just put this stuff in right away. And then off camera, I will run the baler back and uh, get the bale wagon. I don't really need to hook up the hydraulics, do I? We're just backing it in the building. Now, of course, if we do end up selling those trucks, uh, this stuff will have to come back out, unfortunately. Uh, maybe, I guess to be able to fit the new truck or trucks whatever it uh, should end up being yeah it'll be good there okay we'll grab our drill 
We'll probably put that over behind the combine. Tricky one to back in. You can't see jack squat over this thing. Might have to do this one in third person. This one's a little bit tougher. This thing just takes up a lot more room is the main problem. Kind of thinking is we could get the sprayer in here too in this corner. You know, kind of get that. I mean, it's somewhat under, but at the same time, it sticks out so far and everything too. So then this, we're gonna back in. We'll put this in front of the uh, planner there. Let's see how much further, oh we got a little ways yet. Ahead a little bit. There we go. That'll work right there. Perfect. Yeah, let's uh, let's throw that sprayer in that corner there. Then uh, that seed wagon is going to come out, and that's going to leave. Uh, potentially, I guess we could also keep it. Oops to uh, we could use it to haul lime to our spreader I guess now thinking of it okay, this guy is going to be a little bit difficult to get in here so let's go like this Then if we put this guy up here, it leaves us enough room to get around it to get in here and hook on. And that's another thing that I would like to upgrade as well, is that uh, sprayer there. But that'll come down the road. Perfect. So we got all of that stuff in there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get this cleaned up and I'll get this taken back over to John's and I will run down and I'll grab that uh, bale trailer and uh, when we come back we will get some bales hauled. So thanks everybody for tuning in and as always folks, we'll catch you on the next one.